Welcome to another episode of Hoopsology. I am Justin Goodrum, joined by Matt Thomas. What's up, man? Justin, apparently the story of the trade deadline is the Orlando Magic wanted to dominate the headlines in the NBA for one day. <laughs> right. Well, mission accomplished. They did. <laughs> um, and then they're going to fade back to obscurity for the rest of this year and probably next. <laughs> but um, nevertheless, you're right. They did dominate the the headlines today of the trade deadline. It is our trade deadline recap. Um, that's breaking down what we thought were the most notable trades in the NBA. Um, and I'll just be honest. I'm, I never liked the NBA trade deadline. I think it's <laughs> way overrated. Just to be completely honest, like yeah. I don't see like the big trade or thing changing. I think NBA free agency is just a lot more exciting that's especially recently. That's when we're seeing a lot of just dramatic changes, but nevertheless, there are some huge changes um, and some huge non-starters. So, just to recap, um, Kyle Lowry, um, they beat the Nuggets one thirty-five, one eleven. But afterwards, it was pretty much assumed that Kyle Lowry is going to be gone. He was no longer to be a Toronto Raptor, and turns out to find that he's staying in Toronto. So. Just with this, this brings up just a huge problem with just the Raptors. You know, this has been a very tumultuous season. I'm sure it's been like that for all the other teams in the NBA, but for the Raptors, particularly playing in Tampa Bay, I mean, they're not even in their home country. And we all know what, you know, home court can do for certain NBA teams and certainly Toronto's, you know, with their success. Um, not having their home fans has been a huge detriment. And Kyle Lowry staying with with the Raptors and just this season just being pretty brutal. There was the whole news that came out about Pascal Siakam and him being fined by the team, him getting to a shouting net match with uh, Nick Nurse. So the team's not really doing that hot nowadays. Uh, yeah. So in terms of Lowry being on the trading block and now he's staying there, what do you think this is going to do for the morale of the team and Lowry as a whole? Well, Lowry's the leader in that locker room. So if anything, it's it's great for the morale of the team this season. But really, we know, I mean, at this point, the Raptors' chances of making the playoffs are pretty limited. And even if they do make it, it's going to be some low seed in, in the play-in tournament. So really, I... Masai Ujiri is is a super smart GM. Everyone around the league respects him. So I'm thinking he just didn't see value in any of the deals that were out there for him. You know, there were the rumors Lowry would go to the 76ers. I loved the idea of that. Um, and there was also, of course, the rumor that he was going to go to the Heat. But they must have just not offered enough. Well, it does feel like a bummer for the Raptors. If I'm a Raptors fan right now, I mean, of course, you would be sad to see Lowry leave, but he's a 35-year-old point guard. You just can't imagine his value is going to get any higher. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it was, you know, a good a moment, I guess. Not a moment, but a good, I guess a the timing was right to pass a torch to Fred Van Fleet. It didn't happen, so... Um, it's it's a it's a bummer just to see that. Um, I'm just it's popping in my mind because I remember calling Fred Van Fleet Marcus Van Fleet. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like I'm glad I got his name right. But um, anyways, moving from Toronto, we got well, about, oh go ahead well, one, more one more thing. I'm yeah, sorry. Please. While we're on Toronto, yeah, let's sure. also add that the Raptors did make a big trade and that they sent Norman Powell over to the Blazers. That's right. Uh, shout out to Danny Morang. You can go back and listen to that interview if you want. He was talking about the potential of the Blazers moving Gary Trent, uh, mm -hmm. which they did now to the Raptors. He will be an unrestricted free agent after this year. So you have to think uh, they also traded Rodney Hood. You'd imagine they let Rodney Hood go and sign uh, Gary Trent as kind of a three and D player, a great piece to have. So Kind of a, a win in a way for the Raptors there, but also mortgaging um, the present uh, by shipping out one of their leading scorers in Norman Powell, a guy who can go out and get a bucket, had his career high within the past month. So, so to me, I, I'm just saying that to emphasize, I don't understand why you don't move Lowry if you just move Norman Powell. Yeah, quite bizarre. And it also just creates a lot of friction within the team too, right? Just... You know, I was supposed to be traded. I'm not. What's going to happen? What's my future with this team? And also, he had a lot of sh suitors. I mean, holy moly. I mean, 
from our guest, Phil Doucette. He'll go into detail about the fake Woj account, about her <laughs> fake tweets about Kyle Lowry being traded to how that affected NBA top shots to just, you know, interest from the Clippers, Lakers, I thought you said the 76ers. It was just like insanity. And then when it comes up to, you know, one o'clock mountain time, um, nothing happened. He stayed. So I was like, where's the Kyle Lowry trade? It, you know, I, it was just kind of weird just to see that not happen for sure. 100%. Um, if you want to elaborate on this, you can. I didn't get the... I don't, I don't get the fascination with Lonzo Ball. I think he's really improved. I think he's a solid NBA player. I think any talk of him just being, you know, this, I don't know how you would say that, a, um, a figment of his father's imagination, I think is false. He is a legit NBA player with those legit skills that can service any NBA team. However, people were talking about him being a massive factor and the Bulls were in line to possibly get him. And I was like, wow, how's this guy like a game changer for Chicago? He's a, he's an all right point guard, but I don't know. I guess he's a piece. I, I just, and we could talk about this later, but the way that people are currently seeing Chicago, I'm not buying it. And having Lonzo Ball being traded to Chicago, I don't see it being a positive um addition even with them getting um that big trade with Nikolai Vucevic um that we'll talk about later but I don't know I just think Lonzo Ball on any other team he's a minor impact per se I, I don't see him having too much of an effect compared to like I say a Rajon Rondo in his prime I know um I believe he got traded too today so that's correct um, I don't, playoff I don't, Rondo yeah I, I, I don't <laughs> know I, I just there's a lot a lot of hype around Lonzo Ball today I didn't understand why um, what did you think of all the the trade chatter around Lonzo Ball today? Well, there will always be hype around Lonzo Ball. It's it's just destined to be that way because he is the first Ball son to make his trip through the NBA. Sure. Uh, I do think there are some interesting things about him in Chicago. Like I do think he would actually complement Zach Levine pretty well and make them an interesting backcourt. Um, not that he's going to take them to, you know, title prominence or, no. or anything like that, but it is an interesting lineup shakeup depending on what you could get for him. I am, am fascinated by Lonzo Ball in the same way, and I'm going to tie this together to you, Justin, uh, in the same way that I'm fascinated by Ben Simmons as a player. Uh, players with extremely awesome skill sets in some ways, and some extreme deficiencies too. So I, I would kind of tie Lonzo Ball into that category as well. He is a much better shooter than Ben Simmons to this point anyway, not as effective as at getting to the basket as Ben Simmons is, but he's kind of this NBA unicorn, so to speak, but not necessarily in a good way. So I can definitely see uh, why you have your take uh, about Lonzo Ball that way because it's a similar one to, you know, your feelings towards Ben Simmons, if, if I true. may be assumptive there. No, um, true. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there will always be media hype on Lonzo Ball, but at the end of the day, it may be the best thing for him to stay on a young Pelicans team and develop around Zion and throw alley-oops to Zion Williamson and, uh, and Brandon Ingram. I think the Pelicans have been a disappointment. Yeah, I think we've seen Zion take a bigger step, and you know Brandon Ingram's supposed to take this you know All Star step as well in terms of, I mean he made the All Star team, but you, you know what I mean, just to be more of an established player to have the Pelicans within the top eight, and instead they're you know, outside looking in. So I don't think he should have been an All Star, but that yeah. I know that's a hot take, but yeah, no, I agree with you. They I mean, are he has tons of yeah, not looking good. No, um, so I don't. It, I like, I honestly, I like the Pelicans and I like Lonzo Ball on there. I just don't see him as just this massive difference maker on any other team. And I guess let's just might as well just talk about it now. And, and that was Chicago Bulls surprisingly uh, making this trade. And I know they read, they talked about it on No Dunks. And 
I agree with their sentiments. There is very little chatter around Nikolai Vucevic um, being moved. I mean, all the talk was Aaron Gordon, which he did get moved to the Denver Nuggets, which we could talk about that a little bit later. But um, with Nikolai Vucevic, I'll just read this trade. Um, guess who reported it first? Adrian Woganowski. Um, <laughs> Woj bomb. So Orlando will send Vucevic and forward Aqua Furuko Amanu, I probably butchered that, to Chicago for Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter, and two first-round picks. Um, so to me, I think this is a pretty huge deal for Chicago. It makes them relevant. You have two All-Stars. We've seen flashes of this team really being on an upward trajectory. I had no expectations for Chicago. Those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Chicago Bulls fan, believe it or not. <laughs> um, my expectations were low just because of Billy Donovan and everything going on with this team, especially with the circumstances to ask what they are. This year is kind of a throwaway year, right? And then next year you can kind of build and move forward. But now it seems like Chicago's making a play, you know, to make the playoffs here. And I'll just say it, and as you know, you heard me talk about this through this entire season and last entire season. I'm not a big fan of Zach Lavina. It's so weird because I love him in a slam dunk contest. I like the guy's game. I really do. But especially in the NBA, in basketball in general, compared to other sports, like in the NFL, I have a lot more sympathy towards other players in terms of them not having the success because it's more of a team game. And with basketball, we know who's good. We wish to immediately. We know who has an impact and who doesn't. Like we see it with the Brooklyn Nets, right? When you have Durant, Harden, and Irving together, 5-0 and on the West Coast road trip, they destroy everybody, even though they're weak defensively. But Easier to assert your dominance yes, in the NBA. It, it yeah. is, immediately. Yeah. We know like LeBron, like the, whenever he goes to a certain teams or certain players make an impact immediately, and with Zach Levine, we just haven't seen that. And again, it, it, it makes a difference in terms of what – it's true because I didn't understand this. I forgot who said this. Maybe somebody on inside the NBA. I think they said, you know, just because you score a lot of points, it doesn't mean that you're going to have a huge effect on the team. I mean, it kind of matters how you're scoring those points. And – and to your point about Ben Simmons, I mean, he, he has these, his deficiencies and I have my issues with him, but his impact is huge on the game. And I think we've seen that with players like a Steve Nash or a Jason Kidd early in their careers when they have huge weaknesses, but their impact is huge. Chris Paul this year, indicative with the Phoenix Suns, right? So with this team in general, I'm excited for them to have two All-Stars. I'm a little bit on the cynical side, on the negative side. I don't see this having too much of an effect right now. Um... I think what we've seen with Chicago in the fourth quarter has been atrocious. Them not being able to just finish out games. And for a Zach Levine type of player to have that kind of on your resume this season, I can't buy them as any type of a threat. I think adding Vucevic is a huge help. Right now the Bulls, they're 19-24. and 24. I mean, they're in the mix. I and mean, we've seen a lot of, I mean, right now I, I can see them... <laughs> Believe it or not, like beating like the Celtics, I never thought I would say that <laughs> coming into the season. But just considering, right. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, look at, I mean, look at the Knicks. They're the sixth seed right now. They're five hundred, uh, along with the Heat and then the Hornets. So basically, if you go through four to really like, sheesh, I would say even twelve. To be, I mean, the twelfth seed. To be quite honest, yeah. I mean, everybody's in the hunt. I was, I mean. I was dismissing the the magic, but I mean, other than the Pistons, everybody's kind of in it in terms mm -hmm. of making the play in tournaments. So, I think for Chicago, and in, in terms of getting Vucevic, I think it's in play, indicative of this new play in tournament that now there's more of an opportunity to have some life in the postseason. But in terms of this this team being like a Eastern Conference threat, they have a long way to go. And I, you know. Being a fan of this team after the Jordan year, seeing this team progress in terms of them not having a lot of talent, but then playing hard. Those Bulls made me more hopeful compared to this when they have a lot of talent and they mm. just make stupid mistakes. And it makes me less likely to believe in them um, in any kind of a playoff scenario playing any t team. Um, of equal or greater talent. So I'm excited about the trade. It's cool. 
But, I mean, am I jumping for joy? Not at all. I'm pretty negative um, in terms of this having a massive impact. But but what did you think, Matt? Did you think this, is this going to have a major effect for Chicago? Great question. I think we're going to find out a lot about Vucevic. Is he a big fish in a small pond in Orlando? Or is he going to be able to continue to put up similar production with Zach Levine getting a lot of these touches? Uh, so we're going to find out a lot about both of those players. You know, the expectations are going to be higher on this team, and we're going to see how they live up to that. I do think Vucevic potentially pairs nicely with Laurie Markkinen. If Markkinen can can improve, can yeah, start to F. progress again, uh, of yeah. course. Uh, I mean, the Bulls are still a very young team. Yeah. I do think they're in good hands with Billy Donovan. It's hard to project the future, but I think – there, there are certain teams where you get in a bad rut for a while, and I'm okay with giving up what the Bulls gave up to get Vucevic. So if I were a diehard Bulls fan, I still have a soft spot. I mean, I got Michael Jordan behind me. I still have a soft spot for that team. I would definitely be excited for this trade just to get that name, get that sort of pedigree, even if you're ending up you know, for the next two years like the sixth seed in the East – that's still better than where things were. And then at that point, you need to decide if you're able to maybe acquire another asset and look like a true threat to be a contender, or if you're going to move some of those assets and then move back into the draft lottery. So it kind of yeah. this will accelerate you towards that fork that you need to go and will give you a more fun to, team to watch in the meantime. Yeah. So I, I'm all for it. That's true. Best, best deal... Um, Maybe not in terms of all-out value, but this was the biggest name that was moved. This was the most impactful trade. For sure. Um, and it was a main note on Twitter, basically, that the Atlanta Magic was going through like a big fire cell, getting rid of everything. Yeah. And the other big trade was Aaron Gordon, and I'm sure this will make our, our friend Josh very happy, um, big Denver Nuggets fan. Um, the Magic will send Aaron Gordon and for Gary Clark to Denver for guards Gary Harris, a lot of Garys, and RJ Hampton, and a <laughs> um, 2025th, uh, 20, excuse me, 2025 uh, first round pick as well. Um, Aaron Gordon's last game with the Magic, I, I heard his post-game um, comments. I think it was refreshing just because, you know, he went to management several times about trying to get a con being, a, being a contender and it not happening. And him being very unhappy, I think that was nice to see. Just because we hear a lot of players, you know, they request a trade and then they don't want to talk about it. Like, you requested a trade. Like, you know, you know. <laughs> and they just try to hide behind it. And I thought Aaron Gordon handled it pretty well. So him going to Denver... How is this going to affect the Nuggets? Because I would say with Denver, they are at a crossroads right now, right? They start out kind of slow. They, you know, we see the Lakers, right? LeBron's hurt. Anthony Davis, you know, has been hurt. Right now, they're the fifth seed. They're really the West is in a weird predicament, right? Because a lot of the, the teams that we thought might have been traditional powers, I mean, look, the we have the Jazz and the Suns, <laughs> number one and two. And with the Nuggets having an, an Aaron Gordon, somebody, you know, it was funny, it's the scene that the news broke in on their local broadcast, they portray as Aaron Gordon as this high-flying dunker, but he's there for his defensive prowess. That's where his, the bread and butter is going to be for this team to do anything. So do you think with him being on the Nuggets, this will be – a turning point for this team to finally assert their power as a top seed in this conference for the playoffs. I certainly think it could be Aaron Gordon fills uh, the gap that, that was left when um, they didn't remind me of the player that left for Detroit. Um, when they lost him, they lost a lot of team defense. Um, and so Aaron Gordon helps with that. And can't you just picture Jokic throwing alley-oops to Aaron Gordon? Right. I mean, that that yeah. just seems For sure. picture perfect right there. So there could be, um, there. there's now more electricity in that offense as well, which is already a very capable offense. But I think the bigger impact, you know, outside of all the flashy dunks, the biggest impact is going to be on the defensive and on the court, they can move Paul Millsap to the bench a little bit more and be more versatile on defense. So I think that's that's the biggest thing. And 
when you're looking at teams that they're going to have to go against in the West, once we get into the playoffs, that's super helpful for them to be able to have that, to be able to switch more often on defense with some of those combo guards and um, combo forwards that they have. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this makes I, – I picked – I don't know if you remember, but I picked the Nuggets as the number one seed mm -hmm. for the regular season. I just thought with their youth and exuberance from last year – they were going to power through and the Lakers might shift down while well, the Lakers shifted down, but the nuggets didn't stay where I wanted them. So, um, you know, I could, I, I don't know that I buy um, this being something that takes them all the way up into like a top three seed, but I think this sets their roster well for playoff matchups. Did you have any other thoughts about this trade? Nah, not really. Um, I think it helps the nuggets. I think it's a smart move. Um, and, this year's playoffs, I think it's going to be very unpredictable. Makes it exciting. I mean, we have a lot of other factors at play that would normally not be the case in the playoffs. So I think it's going to be fairly entertaining for sure. Um, but I just, it's hard to really get a beat on this season, man. I, just seeing like the top seeds, like the Jazz and 76ers, I can see them getting back. I can see them losing in the first round. I know it just sounds, it feels weird, but I can kind of see that happening. And even like a, you know, right now, you know, Brooklyn, they, they, they're on a one game losing streak, but, you know, they could be the, they could be the first seed when it's said and done. So right now it's, it's really hard to predict. And that's why I don't really like the trade deadline because I don't feel like any major moves are made. Usually it's saved towards free agency. Um, this if is you, one of the bigger trade deadlines, it is. for example. It is. And, and this one was, yeah. To your point, to your <laughs> yeah. point, it's not a ton of action. No. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I think it's weird because we're seeing a lot of, you know, all stars being traded, but not difference makers. And I think that goes to um, Victor Oladipo uh, being traded oh. to the, the Miami <laughs> Heat. We for, had to um, talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I'll let you take it um, once I just recap the trade. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oladipo um, from the Rockets um, to the Heat for Avery Bradley, Kelly Olenek, and a 2022 pick swap. Uh, Matt, you can take it from here. <laughs> well, I mean, this has been criticized around the league as sure. the worst trade of this trade deadline period. I think that's absolutely fair. Uh, I don't think I need to add much to that. But mm -hmm. basically, Victor Oladipo for a pick swap. Because let's be honest, like Kelly Olenek... I, have, I like Kelly Olenek. This, this is not a diss on him, but he's not going to change the Rockets franchise. No. Avery Bradley, an aging asset, asset put in for cap considerations, basically. I mean, no offense, Avery Bradley. I'm sorry. But basically, you traded Victor Oladipo for a pick swap. I think it's a, it's a terrible move. I am biased because I, I just like Victor Oladipo. I, I just think he's a likable guy. He is. Uh, so I enjoyed rooting for him for that short time we got to in Houston. Um, but it's, I, I don't even see the point of this move. Like why not just hold Victor Oladipo it would have been a much better move than making this deal. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's a terrible move. And I think I even saw on Twitter, Ultimately, with the James Harden trade, they really got nothing back for him. Um, so <laughs> it's a bummer for sure. Um, I won't. I won't dwell on too much on the Houston Rockets suffering. Um, no, they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve um, it. But yeah, we can move on. I don't. I just don't think there's that much else to say about it. It's yeah. just awful. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty terrible. Um, other than that, the Bulls also got Daniel. Is it Tice or Tice? I always Tice. Forget it. Tice. Yes. Okay. He, he's a serviceable player. It's very interesting because I, I feel like the Bulls are trying to like really form a playoff nucleus. I'm just not buying it. Um, even I even saw on Twitter that marketing was heavily. They're trying to ship him. Didn't happen. Um, I think even they're trying to work something out with the Washington Wizards maybe, and that that mm. trade didn't work out either. So I don't know. Um, was there anything else in this trade deadline that stood out to you um, that was profound, that kind of you know, raise an eyebrow? And your neck of the woods, man. Yeah, a couple of interesting things just quickly. Uh, yeah, sure. The other big move from the Magic that I think we should mention is Evan Fournier. Yep. You, uh, sure. The Magic's second leading scorer was traded for basically two second round draft picks to the Celtics. I think that's huge. 
uh, because when we've talked with guests in the past, you know, one of the things about the Celtics this year is actually their depth, surprisingly, has been a big concern. Uh, and their three-pointers have also been a big concern, and he helps out on both of those counts. They don't give up any players to get him. So I think that makes the Celtics a little more interesting. I don't think, you know, it, it, again, it's not a move that vaults them to the top of their of the Eastern Conference, but it's it's a big impact move. Did you have any thoughts on that one? Um, I think it's it's a big impact move. Just I think with the Celtics, it's, it's just been such a disappointment. I mean, oh, they've yeah. been one of the most unbelievable stories in the NBA, and this move here, I think it's going to help them. I don't know how much, but at least they're making an effort. With Orlando, this seems to be a trend in the NBA stockpiling picks. And I think we've seen that with even the Thunder. I forgot the number, but they have a, an insane amount of picks the next few years on um, just trying to rebuild. So I feel like that's kind of the game plan. It's just, you know, any asset you have, get rid of it and just acquire picks over the years. The, the bummer is that. You know, you have sometimes you have to rely on other teams, um, and also you have to pick well. <laughs> yeah, that's because you have a ton of picks doesn't mean you're gonna have oh, a superstar sure. team. I mean, you have to you have to pick, and I think with the Magic, I mean that's kind of been indicative, right? I mean, I can't remember the last time the Magic were a relevant team in in the playoff race. Dwight but, Howard, two thousand nine. Yeah, that was yeah, basically about it. And yeah, then over. they gave him up for yeah. a lot of picks, and now it's just been. Yeah. Rinse and repeat. I mean, Victor yeah. Oladipo yep. was one of their better picks yep. uh, that they've ever had, but you know he's not around anymore either. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things where you you need a team that can pick well, and I think with Chicago that was one of their you know greatest strengths. You know, back in the kind of you know after you know the dark ages after Jordan left, you know once they got. Um, Man, uh, Kirk Heinrich, you know, Andres Nocioni, Lou Aldang, you know, Joachim Noah, um, Derek Rose, just, you know, all those all those guys, Ben Gordon, just kind of slowly getting guys through to do the draft uh, or just kind of those unknown guys through trades. Um, the Bulls are really good at that. And I think we've seen that with other teams too. Look at the Warriors, right? Um, other teams have really used to draft to their advantage. I think it's the underrated part of the NBA is – drafting people as opposed to just For acquiring sure. free agents. So I, I think it's definitely interesting to see how that plays out. Um, you said you had one more trade, Matt? That yeah, quick note. I, I did want to give a shout out to Tom Moore, who was on the show earlier this week yeah. because he predicted that the 76ers were going to get a veteran point guard. They went and did that. They got George Hill, yeah, that's right. uh, which I, I think is a great – fit on that team. Uh, the other move that I wanted to mention, we, we already mentioned it earlier, but I, I think one of the underrated spicier moves of the trade deadline is Rondo going to the Clippers because yeah. we had uh, with Montrezl Harrell and moving to the Lakers from the Clippers, we had this little bit of drama between the Clippers and Lakers at the start of the season. Now we have Rondo, who won the title with the Lakers last year, being released, being freed into hopefully playoff Rondo uh, now on the Clippers. Maybe he can teach them, prepare them for the Lakers, and hopefully we get a Lakers-Clippers playoff series at some point, depending yeah. on how things shake out. I think it still is a it's possibility of standing. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think it's – it's going to be very fun to see both if we get playoff Rondo, since he's on a team that will legitimately be in the title hunt. I don't have them as a, a top contender, but there's a shot there. Mm -hmm. um, and then that drama between the Lakers and the Clippers, I, I think that just kind of adds a, a little bit of fun to the Western Conference. Well, that matchup is long overdue, right? I mean, they got For sure. they got a, you know, a date sometime. We just it's don't been all talk to this point. We got to yeah. see it on the court, please. Right. Um, did you have anything else, Matt, you wanted to discuss during this trade deadline? Man, I think that's good. I, I feel happy for JJ Redick that he's going to the Mavericks, uh, a team where he's going to get yeah. at least a little more competitive run than he would get on the Pelicans. But I don't, I don't have too much analysis as far as that goes. I, um, you know, he'll add some leadership for sure, but, uh, that was the last of the, the trades that I had made any notes on. 
Um, and I, I think that's a pretty comprehensive run of the uh, the main deals that went down. So thanks for scrambling with me to to get this reaction episode no. out. So much fun. Yes, as they get into Scrabble, um, they get this trade deadline special done. Lots of great content um, for our listeners and viewers to check out on our YouTube channel um, and our podcast feed. So for Matt Thomas, I am Justin Goodrum. Um, send us an email at hoopsologypod at gmail.com, and we will see you um, this Sunday. Actually, I take that back. That's a Monday. So Monday um, around morning, afternoon, you'll see the flagship show. We'll break down again the ramifications from the trade deadline and any other um, NBA news. So we'll see you then. Peace.